speaker. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us. We're running just a little bit behind, but Jesus is right on time. So I believe, we, <laughs> I believe we're starting right when he wanted us to start tonight. We've got a new location, and we've got, we've got some friends out here at, in the background in the audience that's going to offer maybe some input for us. So this is going to be one exciting Bible study, heartburn. Heartburn, how to keep that, that, uh, that love fire burning in your home. So, Brian, have we got any uh, any housekeeping, housekeeping we need to share? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we came on just a few minutes uh, late tonight. We're using some new technology. If by chance this feed should get interrupted, we're going to record the whole thing, and we'll yes. post a little bit later to, uh, to Facebook and YouTube. So if for some reason this drops, don't worry. A little bit later, we'll have the whole study up for you. Uh, many of you are veterans. You know the drill. If you would like to make a comment, uh, share a text with us, do it on Facebook comments, or another way to do it is text into 479-220-7107. That's 479-220-7107. And uh, we just love to have you interact. That's what makes it fun is when you share yeah. ideas and text with Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Yeah, you can bring a lot to the table because you, you've experienced some things. God has helped you keep the love fire burning, and we want to hear from you. So send those texts in. Uh, we're praying that the audience will help out and join in, and you on Facebook Live, send your comments in too. So what so, you can't see tonight is that there are people on, the, on your side of the yeah. camera looking at us, and so we're doing something a little bit different tonight. Very exciting. Yes, it is. At the end, would you have prayer for us? I would. Let's bow our heads together. Heavenly Father, it's our privilege again this evening to set some time apart to study your word together. You have promised where two or three of us are together in your name, you'll be present among us. And so, Lord, we invite you and your spirit to join us this evening. I want you to guide the discussion. We don't want to say anything off of our own heads. We want to use your scripture we want your spirit to guide us so that we can only say your words this evening. Thank you so much for guiding this discussion and for being among us. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love. That that's a that's a that's a one word, but it packs a lot of power. It has changed a lot of lives, hasn't it? Love. You know, um, I think we would all agree it's easy to fall in love. But what seems to be hard is it seems to be very hard to stay in love, right? Uh, uh, you have so many divorces and uh, that, that, that's out there. And so would that be God's will that, that we have divorces? I don't think so. No, it wasn't. But right now, a large percentage of the people who get married end up in divorce. And so we, I think this is a worthy topic to really dig deep into. And that's what we're wanting to do tonight. We're wanting to dig deep into this topic and, and just uh, capture, you know, what, what God wants to teach us about love, how we can keep the heartburn for each other, how we can pe uh, keep love for each other in relationships. And I think uh, one of the things we're going to draw out tonight, even more importantly, is how do we keep the love fire for God burning in the relationship that we have with him? So, um, And I think something that we need to remember tonight is um, if you're not married, divorced, widowed, yeah. um, single, 16 or 26 or 66. The, the principles around love are going to help any relationship that you're in. Obviously, our series here recently has been looking at marriage. But what we're talking about tonight is across the board applicable to any relationship that you might be in. That's right. So uh, I, I want to go to uh, Scripture. Let's start out with Scripture. Uh, 1 John chapter 4. Verses 9 and 10. 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. And, uh, and at the end, if you go there, you can get us started on that one. I've got a point. I think this would be a, a good entryway into our talk tonight. Verse 4, what did you do, 9 uh, and 10? Yeah, verse 9 and 10. Um, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Okay. All right. 
you know, one of the things that jumps out at me on this scripture here is that that God loved first. God loved first. Uh, that's so important. If if the love that God has, He loved us when when we when we didn't love Him back. I mean, that's 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 real love. That that is love. And uh, in in another scripture is John chapter thirteen verse thirty five. Let's look at that. John chapter thirteen verse thirty five. I've got that one. Okay. It says, By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. You have love for one for another. So this is really, I mean, this is really deep. Really, if you could describe God in one word, it would be love. And if you're one of his disciples, if you are a Christian, you will have love. That's an attribute that you're going to have. It's just that uh, love is an attribute of God is who God is. God is love. And so I think probably the most important thing and, and uh, to me is uh, that we find it here is that love is not a feeling. Love is not a feeling. It can produce feelings, but love is not a feeling. Uh, love, love, is, uh, love is more of a choice. In fact, God commands us to love one another. It's a commandment from God. And I, I think part of the reason why we have so many failed marriages and, you know, the church is not immune from that. Mm -hmm. um, the divorce rate is just as high within the Christian church as yeah. mm -hmm. without the Christian church. Mm -hmm. um, part of the problem is that we have unrealistic expectations portrayed for us through Hollywood. Yeah. Um, you know, anybody that's been married for any length of time knows that the spark that you have when you met your uh, potential wife or the wife to be that spark doesn't stay very big you know for very long and if mm -hmm. you watch hollywood and see how nice they are to each other all the time yeah all the sparks and all the stuff going on <laughs> over there then people think that's the way it's supposed to be yeah. and that's not really the way it's supposed to be absolutely so it, mm -hmm. it's it's more god god commands us he said but you love one another. As a matter of fact, John 15, 17, was you going well, to read there? You know, know? Well, I, I'm yeah. going to go to Romans 5, 8 really quick to talk about love is a choice for us, but to some degree, love is also a choice for God. And here's mm -hmm. what I'm thinking of. It says Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. Christ, while we were not lovable in some That's ways, right. Christ chose to love us. Christ chose to create us, perhaps even knowing that we were not yeah. going to always be yeah. so lovable. So even for God, to some reason, it's a choice to love us. Yeah. We are we are his and he chooses us and he chooses us to love us even when we don't even reciprocate that love. That's right. Yeah. So if you're one of God's, you're going to have love and it's not necessarily uh, just not necessarily depending on how if they're lovable or not lovable i know in my in my relationship with my wife you know it was love at first sight and everything but i was not that lovable after a while and and so, but she had to make a choice to love me and because that she made that choice to love me even when i didn't deserve to be loving when she showed me grace that had a huge impact on my life it made a huge difference so i'm thinking god's god's driving attribute is love yeah because of his love, he had to create someone to love. Mm -hmm. That's why he made Adam and Eve. Yes. Because his love drove him to make them, even though he knew which direction things are going to go. He made them anyway. Mm -hmm. Because love is that driving attribute of God. You know, if you go back to verse 8 in 1 John 4, it tells us that. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. That is God's overarching um, attribute is love and if we let Jesus live in our heart we'll do the same thing it's gonna be spontaneous, spontaneous. It because yeah. because he lives in our heart that's a good point yeah. so well I want to carry us to 1st Corinthians 13 because that's where we're going to spend our our, our time uh, tonight uh, the majority of it but we're gonna we're gonna be bouncing all the Bible but this is gonna kind of lay the foundation here uh, for what love is in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, this is a love chapter. Uh, and probably it would be wise for us to read this probably about once a week, imagine. <laughs> good, because in these instructions, God, uh, God shares to us how we can be loving. And, and so 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I'm going to pick up at verse 4. 
What yep. translation do you have? I have the New King James Version. Yeah, okay. Why don't you read it from yours, Brian? Okay, yeah. or how far do you want us to go? Go Four through to uh, eight. Go through, through eight. Yes, eight. Sir. Okay. Reading again, 1 Corinthians 13, verses, starting with verse 4. It says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Here's the last three important words. Love never fails. Love never, this kind of love. When you have this love, it will always work. It will work. Uh, so what can we learn from here? The first word is that jumps out to me is uh, love suffers long. Uh, other translations say patient. love has patience. Patient. Yeah. Is patient. Patient. So, you know, at the end, you mentioned there, you know, it's just normal that after somebody uh, is married, that after a while, the newness kind of wears off, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, the real and, person shows up. Yeah, that's right. The real person shows up. The masks come off. And, uh, and so that's the reason we need the Word of God. The Word of God gives us instruction that, that we need to have patience with each other. We need to have patience. And I'm sure at first it's really easy to have patience right with each other uh it, it because you know it's all new right, right. and and everything uh but after a while that same thing you know that 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 uh the the other person keeps doing and and again like brian said this could be any relationship but i'm going to pick on i'm going to pick on we're going to pick on marriages right now but this is any relationship but what about that thing that just that 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 uh your spouse just keeps on doing and keeps on doing and keeps on doing and what about that? My wife's looking at me. You want me to answer that? Question? Yes, yes. Be honest okay. here. <laughs> and please, from the audience, we want your help, comments. What do we do about that? I think you, I shouldn't say you have to pick your battles, but you have to understand that each person is unique. And, and, and I think about the things, I'm going to kind of turn it back now even more spiritual. I think about the things that I do that must be really great on God's nerves. Ah, uh, yeah. And I know go. that's kind of a humanizing of God when I say that. But if you look at the things that I do that must pain him, and he has to shake his head at Brian Yegley sometimes. Yes. He still loves me. Yes. And and he he doesn't look at what I'm doing. He looks at hopefully what I will become. That's right. And what can I He's, can become? He sees the diamond in the rough. And, and I'm not suggesting then that I love my wife simply hoping that I can change her to what I want her to be. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, well, my, you couldn't hear that, but my wife did suggest there's nothing I can need to change about her. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a whole nother broadcast on that subject. <laughs> but I, I do not necessarily need to change my wife. Mm -hmm. I'd like God needs to change me. Yeah. But as I look at this section of verses, I realize that this is talking about the love of God. Yes. And therefore it's asking me to be the same way. Yeah. To be patient and, and to understand that we are all uh, humans. Mm -hmm. We all make mistakes and we all come at, at life and relationships from different yeah. perspectives. Yeah. I, I remember James Dobson. I heard a, a little talk that he had once and he said that when, when you date, you must have both eyes wide open. And after you say, I do, you have to have them half shut because you have agreed that you can live with your partner's worst possible habits. Uh, that's right. Because you said, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't, you can't fuss at them after you say, I do. You said, I love you just the way you are. That's right. right. Yeah. You know, so. Well, and so, I like Ephesians 4.32, and this yep. begins to cover a few other attributes that we're going to look at. But Ephesians 4.32 says, and be kind to one another, tender, tender hearted, yep. excuse me, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. That's right. God gives me a wide berth. Yeah. God is understanding. God wants more for me sometimes, mm -hmm. but he, he is kind, he is tender hearted, and he is forgiving. Yeah. And therefore, whether it's with my wife, 
or whether it's my children or my coworkers, mm -hmm. and and I say I'm a Christian, yeah. and I need to ask God to help me yeah. be like that. Absolutely. So uh, let's bring this home to me. Then, first off, God has given us a command here. He's given us a commandment that we are to be patient toward one another, long-suffering. He's commanded us that, that we are to be kind to each other. He's commanded us that, that we are not to be rude to, to, to one another. And so these, these are things that, that even, if this th even if our spouse after a while is really starting to get on our nerves, he's given us a commandment. And, by, and every commandment that God has given us, the very power to fulfill that commandment is in the commandment itself. Just like, uh, and I've said this many times, just like the acorn, uh, the oak tree is in the acorn, the very power to fulfill the promise. So if you lean on God, if you trust in him, uh, you will be able to do it. I can, and so now let's just think about this. If, if my wife, for example, was doing something that, that started really getting under my skin, I'm told to have patience, be kind and not let it build up. So God is going to help me do this. And so, uh, I care to him in prayer, and I'm thinking of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, no matter what I'm going through, to care to God in prayer. And he promises me to give me peace that, that will pass all human understanding. In fact, Philippians 4.13 says, how can I do this? All I things, can do it all, all things, things, including not let this get on my nerves. And as, as, I'm, as, as I'm patient with my wife, as I'm kind with my wife, and I, and I want to just say this, when Cindy started carrying everything to God in prayer, uh, things changed in our relationship. We were fighting like cats and dogs. We were. And, and we were destined for the big D, divorce. Uh, the, from every, from every, everybody said, he'll never change. But she started praying for me. And as she prayed for me, and she started actually living out these promises, claiming these promises to where she had more patience with me, where she, she was not rude when she didn't, uh, she didn't fly off the handle at me. You know, the Bible says uh, that, 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 we, that we we're not quick to anger either. As she changed from the way she used to treat me, I knew something was going on in her life. And, and by her having the attributes of Christ toward me, that changed my life. That, that had a big impact on my life as I seen a change taking place in her life as she was actually living out these promises in 1 Corinthians 13 and Ephesians, um, I forget, 432. 432, yeah. So big impact. Well, you know, the other day I read through the book of Hosea and, you know, it's 12 so odd chapters. Mm -hmm. But what I took away from it was, was a God of second chances, a God who says no matter what we do, um, he continues to pursue us, even yeah. when it doesn't seem to make sense. And I think he asked for us, I mean, it's much deeper than that, the book, but I think he asked of us the same kind of forgiveness and uh, willingness to give the people in our lives, our spouses, second chances, big or small. Mm -hmm. that, I love that picture. Uh, there, that, that Jose gives us here because it brings it back in the right perspective. The, the relationship that we have with, with each other through our marriages is the very same relationship that God has t with us, right? He has these relationships with us. He, he, uh, we are the bride, the church is the bride of Christ, right? And, and you see that how long suffering he is. To, and so every, it, and that's a good point, Brian, all these attributes that we see here, all these commands that we see in 1 Corinthians 13, that's a picture of Christ. It is. That, that is a picture of Christ and, and his love for us. And I think, too, we're looking at so many different ways this, um, this study can go. Yes, it's husbands and wives, but it's parents and children. But it is also church member to church member. It yeah. shows how God deals with us. Um, God's love and his character is the center of all these types of relationships. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and one, one of the other things that make uh, for good relationship is mutual respect and forgiveness. Yes, uh, yes. You know, we've got, we've got Ephesians chapter 5, the whole chapter 5 deals with, deals with that, talking about how wives should relate to their husbands and how wives, uh, husbands should treat their wives. Um, and it's, it's, it's based on mutual respect for one another. Uh, we're not the same. 
um, the things that might irritate uh, me that Shelly does. Mm -hmm. uh, God probably purposely had me pick her because what that one thing that she does doesn't irritate somebody else, it irritates me. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the rough edge on my rock that she needed to, to knock off. You know, so God is working through other people's shortcomings mm -hmm. that irritate us because often we see what's wrong with us and other people. Yes. You know, and so God is working through our spouse to help us be better people. I like that point, at you, you know, because so it's that mutual respect that you have for one another. Mm -hmm. It's not 50 50, it's 100 100. You know, you, you know, some people say, well, 50 50. Well, this one only is doing 48%, and I'm doing 52%. So I'm not going to do the other 2% anymore because this yeah. one's not pulling their weight. There's no such thing in a healthy relationship. Yeah. In a healthy relationships, if you look at, at what Jesus does for us, he does it all. So I should always be willing to go more than my supposed half yes. in the relationship. Um, you know, I was at work all day and I come home and maybe dinner's not ready or whatever, then I help, mm -hmm. you know, help with the dishes afterwards. You know, mm -hmm. it's not, well, I worked all day. You can do the dishes. You know what I'm saying? I mean, some, some men have that attitude. Yeah. That doesn't make for a healthy relationship. Right. Amen. You know, we well, should always yeah. be willing to, to go more than it's expected for each other. If you love somebody, that's what Jesus does for us. He goes, he goes the extra mile. Amen. Yeah. I good. love um, first Peter. Uh, three, eight, and it brings up some of the similar things attuned to what you just said. It says, finally, all of you be of one mind. Doesn't mean that you're all the same, but, but you are of one mind. Have compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tenderhearted. Be courteous. Not return to evil for evil. Um, that, that the willingness to be understanding, to be compassionate, to, to understand somebody had a bad day. Uh, somebody had a rough day at work. Um, it's big, and it's important that um, that we do that. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got a note in from Thelma. Thank you so much. Thelma says, "For the love God has given me, how could I do less for my husband?" That's kind of what you were saying, right. Etienne. Uh, when you recognize you, when you recognize the love that that God has for His church, the bride, what Jesus has. And, and you, you see that, that, that this is what God wants us to, how he wants us to treat each other. You, you say, how could I do any less? Which is exactly what you said. That's, that's, that was good. That's in the verse that I, and I think, I don't think it's come up this evening, but the verse when you were talking about um, not coming home and getting upset because mm -hmm. supper right. not cooked right. or, you know, perhaps the lawn isn't mowed as soon as you thought it should have been mowed or whatever yeah. it is. But uh, Philippians 2, 4 says, let each of you look not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Yeah. In essence, putting others first. Um, the, the world does not necessarily, perhaps contrary to sometimes what we think, the world doesn't revolve around us. And, and it changes the personality and the tone of a relationship when others are first, yeah. not ourselves. Yeah. One thing that, uh, that, that I really like here in, in 1 Corinthians 13 is verse 7. Love always trust. Love always trust. You know, our whole, God's whole plan of salvation is based off of having faith and trust in God. And so God is teaching us uh, to trust and, and trust in. Uh, you know, that uh, sometimes you can read this always trust and you go, well, always trust, always, always believes in. Uh, you might be thinking along the line of, of, a, of a spouse being faithful, but I think it's so much deeper than that. I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's me having that, that I trust in my wife. I, I believe in her. I, I, I count on her. I depend on her. And, and that's one of the, the, the quickest ways you can grow someone, you know, that you can grow their, their character is by letting you know, I believe in you. I trust in you. And, and I, I think that that's, we see that happen in our life too, is we have faith in and we trust in God. As we trust in God, it, it, we're, our, our righteousness actually comes by faith in God. Can you see that? 
where that's where our righteousness actually comes from. So I trust in God. I, I have faith in him uh, because he, you know, I'm married to, to Jesus, that, that bride relationship with Jesus. So I think that's pretty neat. The note that I wrote down about the concept of always trust is that always believe the best about others. Yeah. And I think that's what God does for me. I mean, God not only has died for me, but I think he always wants the best for me. He, he empowers me um, to do better. And I think that if, if I go into my relationship with my wife or others, always believing the best, mm -hmm. there's always going to be something that I could nag on. There's always going to be something I can nitpick on. But why not celebrate the things and believe in mm -hmm. and trust mm -hmm. the good? Yeah. And, and it begins to affirm and validate the other person just like it does me with God. Yeah. Well, verse, you know, verse five um, lays down the foundation for all failed relationships. Which part? Selfishness. Uh -huh. Selfishness. Most marriages break up because the one says, well, you don't do for me what I think you should do for me. Yeah. So I'm going to go find somebody else that mm -hmm. will do that for me. There's all this, everything that was selfishness. Yeah. And um, Love is the opposite of selfishness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you have selfishness, and then you have keep a record of wrongs. Mm -hmm. You know, if you keep on bringing up the stuff that's bad, you know, you're going to break down every possible avenue of reconciliation if you keep on bringing the bad things up yeah. that's happened. Mm -hmm. You know, that should never be part. It's very easy to do when you get mad. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then you remember all the stuff that so-and-so said before, and that is not a good place to go with an argument, you know. But that's 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 the root cause of all failed relationships is selfishness. So when you look at verse four and five, like like you're talking about there, at the end, it's it's a, this is all about putting others first, ab first, first above you. It's like Jesus. In that just what in that well, in that who God is. Yeah. yeah. In well, you go back to First Corinthians ten, just a couple chapters back. First Corinthians ten twenty four. It says, let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. Yeah. I mean, you know, we know that if, if I am lonely or depressed, one of the ways to fix that is to go find someone who's, who's in a worse yeah. position than I am and help them. And it changes mm -hmm. me. Well, I think the same thing is true. Um, seek the other person's um, well-being. Uh, look for ways you can lift your spouse or your children's burdens. Um, let it be about others, and I think you'll begin to see the problems fall away. You know, the Bible said that all Scripture is given for instruction in righteousness and uh, for life. I've got a question, guys, and I, I, this is not something that it was that they that I, they already knew this first time they're hearing this question. <laughs> Put them on the spot. That's scary. Why did the Holy Spirit? inspire Paul to to write this these commandments these instructions to us and, and if you have an answer out there too uh, in in the audience or you're out there on Facebook we would like to hear that why why did the Holy Spirit in in inspire Paul to write this these are instructions that God has given us to to live a life of, of holiness I think contemporary to when it was written the early Christian church was going through a tremendous amount of strife over Jews and Gentiles and, and my way and this way and, and this person's teaching and that person's teaching. There was a tremendous amount of that going on yeah. in their day. But I, I fast forward to 2021 and I look at the chaos in our world mm -hmm. and I look at... Um, words like kindness and compassion and you know all these words that we've been reading tonight yeah and if ever there was a time for these messages it's now whether that be in our marriages our workplaces in the media social media wherever it is we need to be reminded of these very very basic life principles yep. that are all grounded in the life and character of christ amy thank you at the end, of thought. Corinth, you know, was um, was a melting pot, was a crossroads mm -hmm. of of many of the trade routes during that time in Asia Minor, and 
um, there's allusion to the fact that there might have been four letters written to the, to the church in Corinth, but we only have two mm -hmm. that were saved. Um, obviously, they had many problems because often I wondered, it would have been really nice if we had the questions that Paul answered. These are these answers to the questions that they sent him. He was sitting, mm -hmm. sitting in prison and he was writing to them. Um, I wish we had the questions. Obviously, they dealt with some very, very, very uh, big problems within that church. And this is the basis for success. Yeah. This Amen. is That's why God put that in there, because if, if the love of God motivates me, this is the way I would treat people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I flipped over. You said there was the potential of up to four yeah. different letters. Yeah. I just flipped over yeah. to the outline to 1 uh -huh. Corinthians. And it's stunning to look at the various topics that he addresses yeah. in these letters, you know, from uh, emptiness of worldly wisdom, um, marriage and divorce, sexual immorality, um, on and on. Mm -hmm. what, what these folks were dealing with this time, no different than we are today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that in 1 Corinthians 13, the answer is love, which is then the character of God. Mm -hmm. um, it seems simplistic, but it is difficult. And that's why he says, you know, of, of all the command, what's the most important? Yeah. Love. Love. Yeah. You know, the whole Bible has always been for us to faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Uh, the, the word of God reveals to us that there is a God. This is John chapter one, verse 14. And the word became flesh. We are a lot like the people in Corinth. We are a, a worldly people. We are going our own direction and everything like that. Look at the condition of the world right now. Uh, it, look at the at the uh, the moral decay that's taking place in the world right now. Uh, this this uh, this this ideology. You know, I'm a, I'm my own man. I, I make myself. You know, love as we love, as we actually, us that are called Christians, as we let our light shine, as we let the love light shine, as people see things in us that they're not seeing in other people, as God actually works in my life personally, as, 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 as I stand on these promises that, that God has given me, these commandments that he's given me in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8, as I stand on these promises, the, these promises here quicken me. And they empower me to change and, and, and change from my selfish ways to where I'm more like Jesus. Friends, that's what's going to prove to the world that there really is a God. Because everybody knows their nature. They know they're selfish by nature. And they, they know how I am, but they know how I am now once Jesus Christ has come to my life. It's going to prove to the world that there's a God. Uh, I, I believe that's why he gives us these instructions right here. Because the God is love. And, and, and there really is a God, and, and, he, and this is who God is. God is love. That's who he is. And the way that you can tell his disciples is that they, too, will have love one for another, just like God loves us. Go and prove to the world there's a God. So, no. uh, I got one last thing I want to I bring up, and I guess we're going to be wrapping up here mm -hmm. pretty soon, but um, hope. Another thing about love is love always hopes love never gives up you know and this teaches us so much about each other in our relationships we cannot give up on each other we're not a giving up people because we're god's children and we're going to hang on we're going to believe in each other we're going to trust in each other we're going to have hope in each other but even more than that this teaches us that no matter what's going on in your life right now and i'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that maybe maybe your marriage is 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 just falling apart Maybe you've given up all hope that, 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 that your marriage is, is, is even salvageable. Uh, friends, I want you to know because of God, because of his love for you and the power that he wants to give you, he can restore your marriage and he can bring something good out of everything that's happened. He wants to give you hope today in your marriage. So, guys, y'all got any final thoughts or comments? That you'd uh, like I just to have one final text that, that I think... Is a, is a great summation of, of the character of God, the, the love of God, all the way back in Exodus, Exodus 34, and uh, verses 6 and 7. 
And it says the Lord, Lord God. And listen, listen to the words that describe God that, that should describe me and my relationships with my wife, with my children, my friends. Yeah. It says the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Yeah. You know, what if, what if I became more and more like this picture of God with my wife, with my family, with my coworkers and my friends? What a, what a difference it would make. Amen. Amen. One little nugget for interpersonal relationships. We have a verse in, uh, if, I think it's Ephesians. Oh, it's Ephesians 4.26. Let not the sun go down <laughs> on your wrath. Oh, there's some good advice right there. So don't ever go to bed mad. Yeah. yeah. Fix it, because that stuff just builds up. Yeah. It builds up, builds up, builds up. Because you never know. Yeah. You might not wake up in the morning. That's it's right. only God's grace that wakes you up. That's right. Every morning. Yes. And um, that's one way to to keep fires burning at home. Yeah. Um, the same way Jesus wants to forgive us every day. Yeah. So when we when we falter and we confess our sins, He's willing to forgive us every day. Mm -hmm. He doesn't let us go to bed mad. Yeah. He forgives us, and so we should do the same thing with each with one another. That's with any interpersonal relationship mm -hmm. with uh, somebody at work. And um, I heard Pastor O'Phil one time said that if we can just treat people like we treat strangers, treat our family like we treat strangers, yeah, it'd be heaven on earth. <laughs> because he, he said he said often the ones that suffer our wrath are the ones we're supposed to love the most. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so he said he's often counseled people to say, when you pull up in a driveway, close your eyes and say a prayer and say, please, Lord, help me to be kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, uh, that first Corinthians you know, 13. You yeah. know, and it's sometimes that's, that's, that's the honest truth. Yeah. People at work come into the copy room and it's, no, no, you go first, you go first. Yeah. You don't do that at home. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and so we, we, should, we should ask God um, that, uh, that our units can be that light in this dark world because it's getting darker and god wants this love jesus is love he's also light he wants our light to shine and the way the way our light will shine is if we love just like he said in john 13 35 that's right people will know that we are his disciples if our love his love is manifested in our hearts amen yeah. amen so if you're watching this today and and uh, your your love fire has been burning low at your home. Why not be the first one to be more like Jesus? Why don't you make a decision, make a choice to be more loving, to be more kind, to be more patient, not to be quickly angered, uh, to hope, to trust. And uh, in, in, in if you've got one of those spouses, you say, well, I can't trust my spouse. Trust God, friends. Trust yeah. God and let him do the miracle. Yeah. So, all right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you, dear God, for being with us tonight. And uh, uh, as, we, as we've opened up your word, and now we're praying, Lord, that, uh, that, that you would lay someone on our heart that, that we can be more loving toward. Someone that, that, uh, that, that, that maybe needs to be loved, that, that be to, so they can be convinced that there really is a God. Lord, we, I want to pray for all the marriages out there, uh, that you would work in their life, that, uh, that, you, would, that you would cause them to, to just trust you to work in their, in their relationship. I'm praying that you would, that you would restore marriages uh, because, because, because of your love for them. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us. You have a great day, and we hope you can come back and join us uh, Saturday uh, for, at 3 o'clock. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.